Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet this morning. We're going to go do a little pond fishing, so y'all stay tuned. So my uh, my boat's been in the shop now for two weeks, I'm trying to fix my crazy trolling motor that wants to spin you around and try to throw you into a jetty or a bridge. You know, I got that Minn Kota with the spot lock on it, which works great when it works. Okay. So anyway, boat's still in the shop. They're also trying to fix the fuel gauge on it. That's kind of important for. Uh, well, especially when we go like we do to Tampa Bay where it's big water so I got the itch to do some fishing so uh, this morning we're heading to a spot right over here in front of us now I'll admit this place don't look like much but my current personal best largemouth bass ever is, came from this little body of water right here it's about 10 acres it's perfectly rectangular and it has some monsters in it how big was that PB bass 11 pounds that's a big one all right guys we rigged with a, a zoom trick worm June bug seems to be my uh, number one <clears throat> bait. And here's a lot of baby bass in here, lots of baby ones. But again, there are some giant ones also. So don't seem to be anything in between. Or I've rarely caught anything three or four pounds. So that tells me that possibly some other fisherman is putting large fish in here. And I'm pretty sure those big giant ones eat these little guys. There are a few crappie in here too. Or at least there used to be. Maybe we can get dialed in this morning. I think I got one just on the sink there. See the line running? Yep. I catch up with him. <clears throat> in the grass. I don't know what I'm hung on. Somebody else's fishing line. I think I've lost the fish. I'm hung on somebody else's line. Well, we gotta get that out of there. Gonna go wading first thing this morning. Yeah, good lord, who's using a line that big in here? He got in there and got wrapped around this. Let me get this mess out of here. I hate it when people leave line in water like this. This is a very darn it. I'm a big worm hook. Alright. <clears throat> that was like first cast of the morning. First lost fish of the morning. But we we got this mess out of my pond. I'll set it here till we come back. Pick that up. Fish right there. 
every time I fish here. There he is. All right, he's got it. A little baby one. Big enough to make a sandwich. And since he choked it, he is going to make a sandwich. I normally just let this guy go, but he's got that hook right down in his craw. You see, bleed, all the blood, sandwich. Put him over here, we'll get him on some ice. <clears throat> got my last June bug one. I've been using this watermelon red, it seems to work just as well. I'll show you what I'm using too. This is the uh, Mr. Twister keeper hook. Okay, it's got this little barb here. You put in the nose of it. Been using these for years. Tournaments won a lot, won me a lot of money over the years. Just stab that that spike into the head of the trick worm, and we'll take it. Make sure it's not like that. Got to be perfectly flat, or it won't allow your worm to act naturally. And it needs to hang perfectly straight on the hook. No kinks, no wiggles, no bobbles. Perfectly straight. All right. Kind of called him on that point or on that little spot right there. See for another one over there. Oh, there's a fish. Pretty decent one too. I don't know if he ain't big as I thought he was. Another one to chew. Well, here's the two we're gonna make sandwiches out of. Almost twins. Any more we get, we'll release. So guys, we got what we came for, lunch. Two uh, beautiful keeper size bass. In this nice little pond here. Um, I don't normally keep fish out of this pond, but today we're going to. I'm going to cook them up for you. Back with gourmet style. So we got our uh, bass all chilled out, iced down. We're going to put on our our Gen brand uh, cut resistant gloves. All right. At least on my left hand. Okay. I don't really need to put it on my right hand. All right, first cut we're going to make on this bass gonna be right behind the head here just cut right down to the backbone now 
Well, there's a million different ways to fillet a fish. This is the, my, my kind of technique I've been using for many, many years. It's always worked just fine. I'm pointing pressure down on my knife toward the fish's backbone. All right, I'm following it right up to the front there. Then we open that up. Got a little trouble right there. Right. Just gonna kind of peel it back. Then there's a couple of pin bones right here. You don't have to cut through those. You can hear them when you go through them. And we just peel that right off the outside of the rib cage. We get down here by his pectoral fin. We slice it right off. To the other side. You can do this in one fell swoop. I'm trying to slow it down, down the process for you guys to see. Right through the pin bones. Right over top of the ribs. Slice right off. Okay, now. Got our fillets. Those are almost completely boneless. We're going to have bones. I'll show you how to get those out in a sec. Go start it down in a wedge. Hold it with our thumb. Use a sawing motion. Take the skin right off the fillet. The easiest way to find those pin bones is from the back side. And you can kind of run your finger right along there. And there's kind of a little line of them. You're just going to cut straight down. Cut into a little V to get those last few back there. All your pin bones are going to be in that little strip. You can do it from either side, but it's easier to see where they're at from the skin side. It can be right along that lateral line. And that's much more pronounced on a saltwater fish because it's usually red. You can make that little V. Take that little tiny teaspoon of meat out and you won't have any bones in your fillets. Guaranteed. So you guys, please remember, if you'd like to buy the Bubba Blade knife or the Gen Cut Resistant gloves, check them out over on our Amazon store. If you don't see what you want over there, just use that search bar to buy anything on Amazon. Helps what we do here every day at the Backwoods Gourmet Channel. So it's summertime in Florida, and uh, you can probably hear the rain sprinkling on the roof of the porch right now. We're going to go ahead and season these um, beautiful bass fillets. Today, we're going to use some Everglades fish and chicken just to switch it up a little bit. I've coated both sides of these fillets with olive oil because this is backwoods decided she want to have grilled fish sandwiches and not fried she's always looking out for you know a low-fat diet as much as possible so we got those those um, all seasoned up now and we got our sportsman's grill ready to go
Put together our bass sandwich and in uh, typical styles Florida Florida weather it's storming out right now so I'm gonna bring over our homemade homemade bun that's pretty awesome made this from scratch we're gonna put some tartar on a little both sides of it there Yeah, it's a little on top. Not a lot. Okay. Come in here with some uh, tomato. A pickle. Just one. Don't want to overpower it. Two fillets of our grilled bass right there. Bring our top on. For a side, we got some um, some deep fried poodle. Okay, we didn't really deep fry a poodle, our guys. That is deep fried um, spiral cut potato slash poodle. Let's give it a little cut right here. So I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, this bass sandwich a try. And that uh, that fried poodle, that's potato noodles. I already tried that. It's pretty awesome. Wow. You know, this catch and release campaign has been very, very, very um, successful in changing people's mind on how they think about largemouth bass. You know, they have turned them into some kind of an iconic fish that you only catch and release. But old guys like me know that a largemouth bass is just as good to eat as just about any other fish in fresh water. <music>